Hi folks, I wanted a really nice customized USB and SD card adapter for my desk to make it fast and efficient to use drives, accessories, and SD cards. Let's make one. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So we cut some raw material and I had modeled this part up and it's funny, I caught myself. I really hadn't thought about the work holding, but I really want to clean up this outside profile. And I thought the easiest way to do that is to hold it in a vise, but that would require slightly thicker stock so that I could walk all the way around it. And I don't have any thicker stock or taller stock, so I've got to get creative. And the answer there is going to be to see if we can get just enough, a little bit of a meat holding on down there to use some talon grips. So let's update our stock to what it actually is, which is 1.006. And so if we look at the height of our part, it itself is 0.94 inches. So our stock is 1.006 inches, and our part is 0.94 inches. So that means the difference is We've got 66 thou at the four. That alone actually might be enough. We'll have to take a look at our talon grips. But we're also going to stay off the bottom based on our lowest outside operation, which is this adaptive, where under our heights, we're staying 18 thou above the bottom height, which is the selected contour, or also known as the bottom of the part. So we're actually going to add to that 0.018, which means... The sum of those two is 84 thou off, so we should be okay. Getting most of the material out of here with the three quarter inch shear hog, running at all the RPMs we've got, which is just shy of 2,000 surface feet, 10,000 RPMs, six thou per tooth, that's 60 inches per minute. That's about 1,500 millimeters per minute or 0.15 millimeters per tooth. Walking around the part, we're actually starting with an adaptive. I want to make sure that we take a little bit more of a cleanup cut on the two rounded corners so that we don't overload the radial engagement of the tool. Then we're coming around with a 2D cleanup, 10,000 RPMs or about 650 service feet per minute, one thou per tooth or 30 inches a minute. That's 760 millimeters per minute or about 0.025 millimeters per tooth. Next up, another adaptive, but one of the best things out there in CAM, which is rest machining. So we're using that quarter inch tool to do some work inside the part, but it's smart enough to only clean up the remaining stock. That's what rest machining stands for. I always thought it would be the rest of the part, but remaining stock, as you can see here, it's corners that were too tight for the shear hog to get into, as well as some spots on the floor. So we've got an interesting problem. I want to hold this part oriented upright, 
but we've got a ridge along the bottom of the part. So we'll use a parallel and that will help lift it off and keep it level uh, so that we're not using that outside surface and it's not gonna touch the bottom. And then we're gonna use an extra scrap soft jaw that's gonna help us clamp against the fixed side of the vise because we've got another step in our part there. This is where the 770 shines. We're definitely gonna use all these RPMs, 10K, because that's gonna help us with these smaller tools. First off, a 1 8 inch. I'm actually using the two foot from Lakeshore. I found it's a little bit more of a reliable tool and it lends itself to good chip evacuation. 14 inches per minute or 0.0007 feed per tooth. It's lighter than normal, but I'm taking it easy. Don't wanna to go too less at all rub. 14 inches a minute is about 355 millimeters a minute and 7 tenths of a thou is about 0 0.018 millimeters feed per tooth. We're doing a helical ramp in, and then once we get to the bottom, we're doing a step over or optimal load of 0 0.025 inches or about 0.6 millimeter. So this pocket was an interesting problem. We're using a 1 16th inch end mill. So we're starting to get into uh, smaller tooling. 1 16th is about one and a half millimeters. We're using all the RPMs, half a thou feed per tooth. But here's the problem, even that small tool can't really handle an adaptive cut inside this pocket. It's just too narrow of a pocket. And it actually ties back to last week's Wednesday widget when we saw how a 3 16 tool performed better than a quarter inch tool because it let the machine get up to speed. And adaptives are just really tough when it's narrow. So we're doing a 2D contour, but to avoid quote unquote slotting, what we're doing under the linking tab is we're doing a ramp. And what that does is in combined with multiple depths, which is in your passes tab, we're able to cause it to ramp down at each level and that helps with your chip evacuation as you're sliding this relatively narrow and deep slot out. All right, we're having all kinds of fun on the work holding here. I've got to support this part and I want to do so pretty rigidly. So a two, four, six block on the back side helps give us some vertical strength. And then a one, two, three block on the front side helps spread the load across. Here's what's funny. We did uh, run out of Z travel. The Tormox do a really good job of giving us enough Z height to run things like drills and tools that stick out, but it was just a hair too tall. Now I could have pulled the vise out and flipped it over and that's relatively easy to do, especially when you have a fixture plate, but I'm lazy. So instead we're going to go back to some old school skills. And if we use our edge finder here and we just touch off our Z with a piece of paper, plenty, plenty accurate for the task at hand. And it means we can use the work holding as is. Back to our two flute, one eighth inch end mill, about 3.2 millimeters. All the RPMs we've got taking a 0.025 inch or about 1.3 millimeter optimal load. We're using some tricks here on the toolpath containment to get that toolpath to extend out like we want. Take a look at last week's Fusion Friday on how you can easily use stock contours to modify where your 2D adaptive toolpath goes and where it doesn't go. Same trick uh, as we did on the top side here the slot is just a little too narrow to make use of a 1 8 inch tool. I really didn't want to switch to a 1 16th inch given how deep we've got to go to machine the full slot. So we're doing that 2D contour where we just take multiple depths and that avoids us from ever really slotting. It helps with chip evacuation and tool deflection and so forth. Last trick is we've got to hold this and drill all the way through. So I don't want to rest the part directly on the hard jaws. I would prefer not. Drills tend not to last very long through 60 Rockwell. So what we're going to do is use a couple of parallels. That lets us keep the part lined up uh, accurately and parallel with the table. And then we can just slide them out. And that gives us a nice convenient spacing off the jaw.
Who's ready for a visit from uh, Mr. Bozo, to quote Tom Lipton? So I had the best of intentions here. What happened was I wanted to make sure I took it easy when I decked this part off with our Superfly. So I went in and I added some stock, which when you add stock and you have under your passes tab, multiple depths checked, that will force it to take multiple steps down. What I didn't think about, what caught me, was that my work coordinate system was not set to the model box point here. This is the corrected one after we fixed it. I had it set to stock box point. So what happened was when I added some stock above the part here, this 0.01 inches, it lifted my coordinate system up, which means it thinks that the part is actually sitting higher in the vise, which means if the part is higher, the tool ends up going lower and we goofed. Really frustrating. I, I thought about remaking the part and you know what? I left it, not because I'm lazy, but because this is gonna sit on my desk and I think that's a really, really good reminder of being methodical and taking it slow. So it didn't look bad and I like that little reminder of making great parts, which means taking your time, checking your work. We've been using these heat set inserts. They're technically for plastic, but we find that they work great for this situation where you really don't have much, uh, you're not asking much of the screw to hold that circuit board in there. They're super quick to do, and it's just generally an easier workflow when you're doing things like this, rather than going through the effort of tapping and risking potentially breaking a 440 tap. Folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. I love this workflow, being able to think of an idea, go machine it, go powder coat it, and it's been a really awesome accessory to have on our desk. Take care, see you next Wednesday.